in so many damn places. First of all, <laughs> let me say this, all right? This ain't, this ain't the come on, get up, and give a love fest to uh, Dak Prescott. He played bad. He didn't make enough plays in this game in order for the Dallas Cowboys to win. But how in the hell (laughs) do you watch that game and say Dak Prescott was the weak link when when the Dallas defense gave up 207 rush yards, when we watch this secondary absolutely get hibachi cooked? (laughs) <laughs> by, the, by Christian Watson <laughs> on the back end, and Dak is the weak link. This was a 14-point lead going into the fourth quarter mm-hmm. with the quarterback who threw two interceptions early in the game, who was able to come back and get them in the end zone. And we got all of this energy going towards Dak Prescott. I get it. It's easy to choose to talk about Dak. But can we watch the game and stop having this conversation about, well, he's one and nine when the guy on the other side is better than him. Hey, y'all, guess how many times Aaron Rodgers didn't beat Jimmy Garoppolo? Mm. Zero, yeah. Can we stop doing that? Like, I just, let's critique Dak. Let's talk about when he makes mistakes, when he doesn't play well, and, and that's right, and that's rightfully so, because we should keep that energy towards quarterbacks. I got another question for y'all. Does anybody mm. know how many interceptions Josh Allen has threw in the last three weeks? More than anybody. Oh, yeah. Six. Yeah. Yeah. Six. Six. So yeah. where is that energy? We just yes. watched him throw throw a, a pick to lose the game against Minnesota. I don't understand it. Dan got something against Dak Prescott. I don't know what it <laughs> yes. is. For Stephen A to get on here and talk about he the weakest link, unbelievable a. that we watched that Packers game and cho- chose to pick Dak as the weakest link. So I can explain all this to you. So first of all, you're right. They did get hibachi cooked, and and Dylan was the little choo-choo train that the hibachi chef makes just running through the defense. (laughs) Choo-choo, the little steam smoke. (laughs) Yes, it was out of control. (laughs) However, the reason why Dan doesn't like Dak is because me and Dan got into an argument a long time ago, Dak versus Wentz, and I said Dak, and obviously I was right, so Dan can't let that grudge go. And Stephen A., Stephen A., Stephen A. did a little tricky thing there. He did the old lot of people say. (laughs) I'm not yeah. One good because he knows better. <laughs> and Dak Prescott is a quarterback of the Cowboys, which means you're going to be under a lot more scrutiny week in and week out. I understand that. He understands that. But the idea that Dak hasn't come through in big moments is absurd. Like, he he's led playoff winning game or game winning drives in the playoffs. He's done all of those things. He's a good player. Yesterday's loss was not, uh, or excuse me, uh, Sunday's loss was not only on him. What is a fair critique today, Dominic Foxworth, of Dak Prescott's performance in that? game and this season in general. Yeah, he turned the ball over in that game. That's a problem. One of those, I think, uh, the playmaker himself yeah. pointed out that it wasn't even on Dak Prescott. It was about reading middle field open and close. So he makes mistakes. There are no perfect quarterbacks in this game. We just get in a position where there are certain quarterbacks that certain people are always looking for yeah. a reason to discredit. And Dak Prescott falls in that category. Lamar Jackson's another one who comes to mind. Is it fair to wonder, Mike T, if some of us, myself included, thought that Dak's return would elevate this offense to a place that it doesn't seem to have gone. And part of that is the mistakes, and part of that is they were running the ball so effectively but seemed to get away from it in the fourth quarter of this game to a point that Marcus was making earlier. Yeah, agree. You nailed it. They were up 14 points, and since that point in the game, they threw it eight times and only ran it six. And the real problem for the Dallas Cowboys isn't Cooper Rush or Dak Prescott. Is We're sitting here the second week in November, and their second-leading receiver receiver is Noah Brown with 26 receptions and that's really the problem I don't think Dak played great I love Dak I think he's underrated but until they get another element in their passing game they have to lean on the running game jump in here Danny yeah the run game they'll get Zeke Elliott back too and even though Pollard's running better having both of them enables them to do a lot in the running game because they don't want to ask too much of Tony Pollard they want to keep him fresh uh, for the fourth quarter I think a, a fair critique of Dak on Sunday is uneven right there were the interceptions but they also showed some elements of the passing game that they hadn't really shown yet this year. I think Dalton Schultz coming back from injury and being further incorporated will help. I, I believe they've had their two highest scoring games of the season the last two weeks. Right, yeah. Yeah. So obviously the offense has been elevated since Dak's go- come back. And unless he was playing defensive tackle, I don't think you can call him the weakest link. <laughs> Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.